From your home to the White House, from your neighborhood to City Hall, and from your city to the world and beyond. This is Alpha City News with Craig Allen. The Jackalope found herself in a bit of trouble with the law this past week following a successful battle against Jumping Jack, who had been using his leaping powers to rob Skycar gondolas while they were between stations. The Jackalope had been tracking the 'er ne'er-do-well for almost three days before managing to catch him red-handed as he attempted to add the number 27 green car line to his list of successful targets. The two commenced a bounding battle that ranged over the rooftops of the Bakersley neighborhood before Jack was finally run to ground on Cormorant Avenue. Though the jackalope did stop the criminal, who was safely transferred into the custody of the ACPD, her trouble began with the appearance of a reporter from the notorious tabloid, the Alpha City Tattler. The reporter in question repeatedly asked the jackalope if it wasn't wrong for a cute girl like herself to be out of the kitchen and other such tripe, before finally exhausting the jackalope's patient by inquiring if being, as he termed it, a butterface with a decent body, shouldn't she be referring to herself as the jillalope? Whereupon the angered heroine broke his nose. The police on the scene were forced to arrest the jackalope for assault. The reporter, who has been identified as Carl Cramler, was not one to leave well enough alone and began to threaten the jackalope and gloat about how much he was going to sue her for, making enough trouble that he himself was arrested on charges of interfering with an arrest, disturbing the peace, resisting arrest, and assault on an officer of the law the last apparently stemming from him spitting on the arresting officer. While the jackalope made bail quickly, this could turn into a huge amount of trouble for her, as the Riley Syndicate, owners of the Alpha City Tattler, have proved quite ready to litigate when one of their so-called reporters find their less-than-savory actions lead to threats and or violence. Unfortunately for the jackalope, While this broadcaster understands her anger, I do wish that she had managed to extricate herself before she lost her temper. Alpha City News will bring you more on the story as it develops. Radiant was called away from a charity fundraiser Saturday afternoon when the photo-negative man appeared once again, this time over Kirby Park. Radiant, often called the Queen of Heroes, was hosting a joint benefit for the charities Homeless No More and the Children's Future Fund in the park when the sudden disappearance of sunlight in the cloudless day announced the return of the unfortunate superhuman. While definitely a threat, the photo-negative man cannot honestly be described as a villain. Dr. Martin Ackles was once a promising young scientist, doing groundbreaking research in the nature and uses of light. An experiment gone wrong changed him into the tortured soul he is now, appearing as an actual photo-negative of his former self and possessed of strange and threatening powers. As with the two times Dr. Ackles has reappeared since the accident which changed him so horribly, his very presence caused a field of so-called negative energy to begin saturating the area around him. This negative energy, which appears to sustain him, spreads over an ever-increasing region the longer he is present and remains for a time after he leaves. Scientists who have studied Dr. Ackles' work believe that he somehow managed to turn himself into a living conduit between our world and one composed of the energy he now radiates, and that he is now being pulled back and forth across the barrier between the two worlds by forces that are not currently understood. What is known, however, is that any people or objects from our world that are exposed to this negative energy for too long become infected by it, 
first becoming sluggish, then a short time later when they regain strength, turning into three-dimensional photo-negatives of their former selves, who also absorb light and heat from our world while projecting fields of negative energy themselves. So far, no human beings have been exposed to the negative energy for long enough to make the process irreversible, although several cows, exposed for almost four hours when the photonegative man first appeared at the Eisner University Agricultural School, seem to have been. Like the photonegative man, they all eventually were exposed to large enough amounts of heat and light that they were, theoretically, pushed back across the border into the negative world. So far, the photonegative man has also been dealt with only by throwing enough energy at him, be it light, heat, radiation, or electricity, so that he is caused to vanish once again. This time, however, Radiant and the faculty at Eisner University's High Energy Lab were able to do better than simply forcing the former genius to disappear. Having dealt with the photonegative man at his last appearance, Radiant very carefully exposed Dr. Ackles to a steadily rising amount of her own energy, which had the effect of slowing and then stopping the spread of his negative energy field. This stoppage allowed the civilians in the area to be evacuated to a safe distance while allowing the staff of the High Energy Lab to build a containment field around the doctor. The field, calibrated by observing and then matching the energy output of Radiant herself, let the scientists safely contain Dr. Ackles and move him to a more permanent containment area at Eisner University. The hope, according to a quote given to intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston by lead scientist Miranda White, is that Dr. Ackles will be able to assist in his own recovery now that he has a stable environment. Radiant after being assured that there was nothing more she could do to help the photonegative man return to her charity work, even giving an impromptu speech explaining the events of the day, and illustrating how, more often than people think, a non-violent solution can be found in even the most frightening of situations. This broadcaster heartily agrees, and has no doubt that one day, hopefully very soon, Dr. Martin Ackles will agree as well. The Flottown neighborhood has been racked with violence over the last week, as a gang calling themselves the Machine Heads has begun a small war against the Mercedes organization, attempting to oust the long-standing criminal group from their home in the yard. While the Mercedes are a known quantity, the machine heads appeared seemingly out of nowhere, their metal headgear making it almost impossible to identify the gang's members. In addition, the masks contain eye-based lasers, and some members have been spotted who also use bulletproof exoskeletons to augment their strength and lethality. In the middle of the running battles, the street rat has been spotted taking on both sides. Street Rat, a secretive, apparently non-powered hero, has been a constant thorn in the side of the Mercedes business for almost five years. Those with knowledge of Alpha City's gangs believe that the ongoing actions of the Street Rat against the Mercedes could be what convinced the machine heads to attempt a takeover. True or not, the fact is that some of the worst sections of Floptown are now the scene of daily battles between the two gangs and the Street Rat. Despite the rise in violence, the ACPD has not managed to capture a single member of the Machine Head Gang, and only low-level members of the Mercedes Gang, and even those have apparently been gift-wrapped for the police by the street rat. Accusations of corruption and racial bias are nothing new to the 13th Precinct, which covers Floptown and the Yards, and there was indeed a period during the 1980s when former police captain Lou Miles actually ran all criminal activity in the area, before being arrested and incarcerated during the scandals which took down Mayor Dexter Craven's administration. Though a far cry from the days when they were known as the Blue Wolves, rumors persist that the 13th Precinct has become a dumping ground for officers who show poor performance, poor motivation, 
and little to no interest in protecting the low-income families that make up Floptown from the various criminal enterprises that flourish there. Indeed, the current leader of the 13th, Captain James Barlow, has been quick to blame the problems of his precinct on the street rat, rather than the lackluster attitude displayed by most of his command. We will bring you more news as it becomes available. On this week's upcoming community calendar, the Powers at Work Foundation will be holding another job fair at Leakey Center on Wednesday. Do you possess a low-level super ability but aren't interested in trying the life of a superhero? Come down and meet with Powers at Work representatives who will try and match your ability to the needs of a local business. Kim Wilson, who is running the job fair, says that anyone with a little something special is welcome, especially those who might have some psychokinetic, empathic, or telepathic skills, those with super speed in either flight or running, and those who have super strength. Ms. Wilson stressed, however, that they do their best to find matches for everyone who comes to them, citing the case of Simon Daniels, who believed that his ability to change the color of fabric was almost useless, and who now, after registering with Powers at Work, works alongside top fashion designers, creating one-of-a-kind gowns for the rich and famous. Powers abound, and so do jobs for those who have them. The Powers at Work job fair will be open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. this coming Wednesday in Conference Hall 2 at the Leakey Center. This has been Alpha City News, written and produced by Carter Lee. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can drop me an email at alphacitynews at gmail.com. You can also sponsor the show by going to patreon.com and searching for Alpha City News. There are some cool things that first patrons are going to get, so go ahead and check it out. A special shout out this week to Josh Downing, who was the first official Alpha City patron. Thanks a lot, man. Again, that's patreon.com under Alpha City News. I'd also hugely appreciate it if you could take a minute and leave reviews at iTunes or leave a comment at rhymeswithgeek.com. Rhymeswithgeek.com, in addition to hosting my podcast, is also a great place to get the latest news, reviews, and podcasts about all things comic-related. They're pretty cool. Check them out. Until next time, Alpha Citizens, you have a great week.